let's take a real life case that I found on Reddit. Here we have a case of a 28 year old female. She had to call an ambulance for the worst stomach pain in her life. The ER said that nothing was wrong. So 28 year old female, 205 pounds, she's 5'7". She takes Ozempic for weight loss, so that's semaglutide. She's taken one milligram as a dose. She's also taken Wellbutrin for depression, Tylenol and Advil off and on. Now that's a question that's very interesting that should be asked. For one, how much Tylenol is she taking because that can cause damage to your liver. And then also Advil. Advil can cause issues. Not only does it affect the kidneys, but also it can cause gastritis. It can cause peptic ulcer disease. So that's definitely concerning right off the bat. Now people will throw out Ozempic as causing GI symptoms. The most common GI symptom of Ozempic being nausea. Uh, that's in up to 20% of cases where people get either nausea and or vomiting. And then you also have diarrhea. Abdominal pain is a potential side effect of Ozempic, but overall it's not that common. And if it does occur, it's not going to be severe, at least not as a direct result of the Ozempic. Now, Ozempic rarely can cause pancreatitis. Pancreatitis can cause severe abdominal pain. But usually when people get pancreatitis as a result of Ozempic or Manjaro, it's not life-threatening. They're not in the intensive care unit to the point of requiring uh, a ventilator because sometimes pancre pancreatitis can be that bad. So usually when people do get pancreatitis, especially from things like Ozempic or Manjaro, it's going to cause mild to moderate pancreatitis if they do get pancreatitis. But again, overall, the uh, incidence of pancreatitis as a side effect from Ozempic or Manjaro, very low. So those are some things that, are think that I'm thinking of right off the bat. But let's get a little more history. She had her gallbladder removed four years ago. That's important because Ozempic can also cause gallstones and gallstones can cause right upper quadrant pain right up in here. So that's another consideration. Also noted she had a C-section, but no other surgeries. A C-section, anytime you have surgery in the belly, whether it's a C-section or some other kind of abdominal surgery, there's always the risk that you could have issues even much down the road as a result of having a previous surgery on the belly because lots of times you can have adhesions that form as a result of that scar tissue that results and that can actually cause an obstruction of the bowels and a small bowel obstruction or a large bowel obstruction can cause severe uh, abdominal pain. So that's another consideration. She says, yesterday, all of a sudden, I got this horrible cramp in the very top upper right of my stomach. So right up in here, that definitely points to things that exist in that area like your liver, like your gallbladder, which she does not have. But sometimes even when people have their gallbladders taken out, you can still have issues as a result of that. So she says, I thought maybe I had to go to the bathroom, but I didn't. I couldn't move and I was crying. It came in waves for about five minutes, horrible pain, then a minute or two where I could catch my breath. I was less debilitating if I was crunched over. So this seemed to be not as bad for her as much as I could. Standing or taking pressure off this area made it unbearable. I called an ambulance because there was no way that I could drive to the hospital. In the ambulance, they gave her morphine and Zofran. So Zofran is for nausea. Honestly, it did not help too much. Just take the sharpness out of it. But I was still in a lot of pain, especially since I couldn't crunch over. Now at the hospital, they gave more morphine. And after about an hour, the pain was gone. Still a dull ache, but not painful. But here's the thing. My CAT scan and my blood work came back completely normal. And that's significant. They must think I'm crazy, but I would rather go through child labor than this stomach pain again. Is there something it could possibly be that isn't showing up? Only thing on CAT scan was mild fat infiltration of the liver and some red blood cells in the urine. Her period ended a few days ago. She also had some other labs, globulin 4.1, NIGAP4, chloride 112, really nothing significant there. When I scroll down, she also left another comment that her lipase was normal. So when your lipase is normal, that would mean that you're not having pancreatitis. If you have a CAT scan that's normal, that rules out a lot of things. It doesn't rule out everything. But if you don't see inflammation of the pancreas on the CAT scan, then there's no pancreatitis, especially with a normal lipase. So pancreatitis would be ruled out in this situation. Other things that I'm thinking of getting back to that Advil, because 
I can't tell you how many times I've seen young women who are taking Advil or ibuprofen who have very severe abdominal pain. Now, usually the abdominal pain that I'm referring to in this case is mid epigastric area, um, not necessarily one side or the other, just kind of like right in this e uh, region here. That to me is very suspicious of either gastritis, inflammation of the stomach, or it could be peptic ulcer disease. In cases where I've had women who presented this way in a very similar manner, where they're taking ibuprofen or Advil, whether that be for menstrual cramps, they end up having this severe abdominal pain and they go to the ER and they're told there's nothing there. They're prescribed something like Prilosec, which is omeprazole. That's a, a PPI type of medication. And they're told to come back, go see a gastroenterologist if things get worse. But usually what ends up happening is they take the Prilosec and they get better. They're, they're told to avoid spicy foods and whatnot. And they're also told to avoid taking ibuprofen and or Advil or a related NSAID type of medication like naproxen or naproxen. So those would be the most likely diagnoses that I'm thinking of. Again, there's a possibility that it's related to Ozempic, but it seems less likely because when people have side effects of Ozempic, uh, specifically talking about abdominal pain, it's usually not a very intense type of pain where it causes severe belly pain. It's usually um, my stomach's just not feeling really good. The one thing I'll say that makes me a little bit curious is that it's she, her pain is in the right upper quadrant and that could indicate that there's something wrong with the biliary tree. Your liver makes the bile and then it gets secreted via the biliary tree and then that bile eventually makes its way to the intestine. The gallbladder serves as a storage sack for that bile, but she's had her uh, gallbladder taken out. So you could still have issues related to that that's causing her abdominal pain. Because she didn't have any fever, I'm not suspecting that she has any kind of, kind of infection of her biliary tract. Sometimes that can happen, but usually you have fever that's uh, associated with that. So we don't know what happened with her because there's no follow-up, but my suspicion is that this is most likely going to be gastritis or peptic ulcer disease. Most likely gastritis related to the ibuprofen, the Advil, most likely. Now, let's see what ChatGPT has to say. Copy and paste. Boom. Okay, I'm going to say, I am a doctor. This was my patient's situation. Please help me make a diagnosis. So copy and paste. I'll just add in that her lipase was normal. Her lipase level was normal. Boom. Let's see what ChatGPT is going to spit out. As an AI, I can suggest possible conditions based on the symptoms you've described but it's important to note that I can't replace a comprehensive medical exam and diagnosis. One possible condition that could cause these symptoms is sphincter of OD dysfunction. Mm. So that's related to the biliary tract. The sphincter of OD is a muscular valve that controls the flow of digestive juices, bile and pancreatic juice to the first part of the small intestine. That's called the duodenum. Dysfunction of the sphincter can cause severe abdominal pain, often in the upper right quadrant, and it can occur more frequently in those who've had their gallbladders removed. However, it's worth noting that this condition can be difficult to diagnose and often doesn't show up on CAT scans or routine blood tests. A sphincter of OD dysfunction is a specific diagnosis that didn't come to my mind immediately, but certainly helped me because it made me think of that. Otherwise, I did think of biliary issues, but it wasn't specifically sphincter of OD dysfunction. So, Thank you, ChatGPT. Another possibility is pancreatitis, but a normal lipase level makes this less likely. Agree. Other possibilities include gastrointestinal issues like peptic ulcer disease, gastritis, or even conditions like kidney stones. ChatGPT is pretty spot on with that. Given the severity of pain, it would be advisable for your patient to seek a second opinion or further evaluation. This may involve more specialized testing, such as an endoscopic ultrasound or a HIDA scan, which can help evaluate the biliary and digestive sy systems more thoroughly. Again, this is just an AI-based suggestion. Please consult with healthcare professionals as necessary. So I think it was actually pretty spot on is, is suggesting gastritis, uh, peptic ulcer disease, but also the possibility of sphincter OD dysfunction. So now as a doctor, I'm thinking, oh, is this sphincter OD dysfunction? Maybe we should really give that some more consideration. But I still think the most likely diagnosis is gastritis or peptic ulcer disease.